Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Pawan. I'm a registered nurse based in Sydney, Australia. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the kind of math you will come across in nursing school. So let's get right into it. Now, math is something that stresses a lot of people out. And I don't want you to be scared when you hear me say that you're actually going to do math calculations in nursing school. But to do those, you only need to know like the basic math skills like multiplication, division, subtraction and addition. And the good news here is that you actually don't even need to do those calculations by hand because the university I went to, they allowed us to have calculators even during the math exam. How great is that? So I'm sure that most universities across Australia, if not all, will allow you to actually have those calculators during the maths exam. They make it easy because they know when you're actually at your nursing job in a few years down the line, you will have access to the calculators anyway. And you will also have access to the pharmacists who can help you out if need be. So there's going to be a few maths exams that are spread throughout the coursework for both enrolled and registered nurses. And in each of those, you have to acquire at least 90, if not 100% to pass the exam. And it doesn't matter how well you do in your other assignments, your essays, your presentations, your quizzes. If you don't pass the maths exam, you won't be able to progress to the next step. But don't worry about it too much because there's only a handful of formulas that you need to know for these maths tests and you will get used to them because you'll be using them repeatedly. And in the real world, when you're actually working as a registered or enrolled nurse, you will always have other nurses to double and triple check your doses before you administer them anyway. So don't stress about it too much. And as I said, you will get used to the formulas. So with these maths calculations, basically what we are trying to do is we calculate the doses for different drugs. Um, we also calculate the IV drip rates, for example. And we also do some weight based calculations for different drugs for pediatric patients. So let's go through a few formulas together. For example, the IV drip rates. So how we actually calculate the IV drip rates is basically we take the volume, whatever the volume is in mils divided by time in hours and that's how we calculate the IV drip rate. Pretty simple, right? So for example, you've got an order of normal saline. So one liter of normal saline to be hung over, let's say four hours. So one liter converted into mils would be 1000 mils divided by four hours. So time is always in hours. So 1000 mils divided by four hours is equal to 250 mils per hour. So that's how you calculate the IV drip rate. The other common one that you, you'll be using is how we calculate the dose for different drugs. So for example, um, you've got an order. Actually, let me go through the formula first. So the formula goes by whatever the order dose is divided by whatever the dose we have available, for example, per tablet. That's how we calculate how many tablets we're gonna administer. For example, we'll keep it nice and simple. You need to give one gram of paracetamol to your patient, but the available dose is 500 milligrams in one tablet. So what you need to do is convert the grams into milligrams first. So we always have the dose in milligrams for the purpose of the calculation. So for example, one gram of paracetamol into milligrams is 1000 milligrams divided by what dose did we have? We had the 500 per tablet. So 1000 divided by 500 is, is equal to two tablets. It's basic math. I mean, if you know that you, you need to give 1000 milligrams and you've got 500 tablets, so you're obviously gonna give two, but this I just kept it simple for the purpose of the calculation, but this is how you would calculate. But you always need to make sure that the dose is always in milligrams, both sides that's how you will get the, how many tablets you need to give, okay? Now the formula would be slightly different if we were doing, for example, liquid Panadol for a pediatric patient, because there's so many factors that you need to consider, the weight of the patient and how many milligrams in that one mil. So I'm not gonna try and confuse you and go over that complex formula for now, but if you need me to go through all the formulas that we use as nurses, you let me know in the comment section below and I can try and make another video where we can go through a few examples as well and that way things would be a bit more clear. Now, because these maths exams are actually spread over throughout the coursework, um, so they won't um, go over all the formulas at one given time and bombard you with all this information. They will go through a few formulas at a given time and then let you practice those and then they'll test you based on those formulas only. Now, just a side note, guys, if I can do it, you can too. Just study exactly what they ask you to. 
So that's pretty much it guys. You definitely don't need to know any complex maths in nursing school. But if you do want me to go over those formulas a little bit more in depth with a few examples, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try and make another video for that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.